All right, welcome back to another video. This one's on Java development. I made a little project in here, uh, a clock, a digital clock. I used the Java Swing library to do all of my visual effects for it. And also the Java AWT library for some fonts and layout stuff. And then I'm using the just Java time libraries to get the date time. So this project is an introductory high level view of Java just as an object oriented class based language. So one of the things I wanted to make sure I, I did was make a class and this class clock will create a, an, a clock pop up. And inside of this class, I have a whole bunch of different things. I have a couple of methods or functions and they're for displaying the correct time based on 24 hour or AM PM format. I have the clock function itself, which is a whole bunch of J labels and J panels and J buttons and a J combo box to have different time zones. All of this is again, formatting, anchoring, um, the grid width, putting everything where it's supposed to be in the grid. So the reason that I did a panel inside of a frame is a panel allows for more organization. It has floating locations for the J labels so you can move them around inside the panel. Frames are harder to do that with. So I added all of them to the panel, then added the panel to the frame, gave it a size, have, has it exit when you close out of the window. And then I'm doing all of my time getting, you could say inside this while loop. So it's getting your local date time based on your time zone. And it's defaulting to your system time zone uh, until you select one from the dropdown, which I'll show you in a sec. Then I have a conditional statement here saying, if the AM PM radio button is selected, then you'll want to set the time text to be the AM PM display, else you want it to be the military display. And it also defaults to the AM PM. I have that up in the formatting. And then all of this is just to get the date. I wanna add some functionality in the future to be able to uh, change the way the date is displayed as well, having multiple formats rather than just month, day, year, maybe have like the day itself. So like Tuesday, day number, like the 8th, January, 2021, something like that would be a good functionality to have. And then in, I'm doing all of this in a while and inside of that, I'm doing a try catch. So it'll keep doing this while every 100 milliseconds it'll sleep for, and then it'll do it again. Uh, and then it'll just raise an interruption exception if you somehow get out of the while loop, which you shouldn't be able to. But the reason I'm doing 100 milliseconds, I had started with 100 with a thousand milliseconds or one second, and the delay between when it gets your time and when the seconds were changing was just too much. Your clock could change minutes faster than your system clock could faster than this clock would. So by bringing it down to 100 milliseconds, it's refreshing often enough that there's no noticeable latency in the clock. And then I just call the clock method inside of the main. So let me run this function so you guys can see what it does. It'll pop up a window, give you the time, AM, PM format, the date, and then it'll let you select a time zone. So before we do that, let's select a different, so we can do 24 hour format, no change. And then say we wanna see what the time is in Singapore. It'll change that as well. The date changes too. So it's 12.51 PM on the 14th. You can also see that in military time. So the hardest part of this project is really getting this to select right. And even that wasn't too bad. Java has a lot of built-in libraries that make your life really easy. For example, I'm getting that all in this time zone string array. And there's just a time zone library or a class that you can just call get available IDs and it'll return an array, a string array of all the available time zones. 
and then you can just put those into a J combo box and it'll let you select them. And then you can just set the default ID and from there you're good to go. Yeah, so that was my project these last couple of weeks and it helped me learn a lot about Java development. Uh, Java's so far, in my opinion, really nice that it's all class-based. It's really easy to find a library that does something that you are looking for that's already been made by someone else or baked into Java itself. So I'd say as far as that goes, it's one of the best languages I've used for uh, usability, just having lots of libraries already existing. But yeah, that's my clock. And there's definitely a lot more that I want to do with it. I want to extend this class into some other classes. So taking maybe like a stopwatch that'll display the clock on it as well. I now have a clock itself. So this whole class I can use and I, I can have other classes inherit all of the methods that this one has. So that'll be another project down the line. But thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can download this file in the GitHub. There's a contact me, send me any questions you have, send me any feedback, I'd be happy to hear it. Thanks for taking the time to come and look at this video.